Welcome to Wagered on Tilt, everyone. I am T, and today is step three of our Microsoft Excel modeling. Now, we're going to cover some basics again based upon what we did last time. So previously, we went ahead and did some averages for the league, did some predictive analysis, and saw some pretty raw numbers. Now, in this video, what we're going to cover is how do I then reduce the amount of data set that I'm going to be using? Because again, if I want to use a full season's worth of data, maybe it's not all relevant. Maybe the first two weeks of an NBA season have far little value compared to the last five of a season. Or if it's the middle of a season, do I want to use the last 10 games, the last 20 games? I don't want to use all of the last season's games. Players have changed, people are injured, things like that. So we're going to show how do you think through this process, and then also how do you adapt your formulas in Microsoft Excel to account for that. And then that way you can try and handle it a little bit more generously with what kind of data you're using versus just a grab all and then see and hope and pray that it works. So let's go ahead and dive on into Microsoft Excel. All right, so I've gone ahead and flushed all of those out. So what we're gonna do now is just copy this formula, drag it all the way down and paste it. And you'll see that all of these things have been converted into dates, which is gonna be useful. So I'm just going to call this date two. Only reason why I'm switching it over here to date two is because maybe I want to keep it in this format for some reason. If you don't want to keep it in that format, you can just merely go ahead and call this date, copy this column, come over here to the header, right click, paste special, and then you'll choose, let me get on the screen so you can see it right there, values and hit okay. And then here you'll just come over to home general and just say it is a short date and it'll convert it back for you. Uh, that way it's easier to read when you sort, it still reads it through the correct data point. All right, so now that we've scrubbed our data and we have some of the information we're gonna plan to use, one of the things we need to do is update the sheet. Now, previously we did you know, starting uh, the away count and things like that and then the end and then getting the points. So we're gonna change this up a little bit. So some of these formulas may break and if they do, we can quickly fix them by changing where they're referencing. So let's go ahead and insert a row here and we'll do one more. Now here I'm gonna say game history count. And what I mean by game history count is I wanna say how many games I want to include. Now remember, our data is sorted by the most recent games on top and older games on bottom. So we can go ahead and adjust for that. So if you wanna try and back test some of your data, which we're gonna pretend we're doing right now, and I wanna use some of this stuff to predict out um, different information. So let's go ahead and sort here. And we're gonna sort, and instead of newest to oldest, we're gonna say oldest to newest. Uh, just because we're gonna use some of this games that are down in here. So I'm gonna say, I wanna try and predict the outcome of Atlanta at Minnesota. So we'll go ahead and do this prediction here. So let's go ahead and say, so 130, great. So I'm going to say, I think that the first, you know, I'll say 15 games are gonna be important. So. What I'll do is I'll just put a marker over here. So I'm gonna say 15. So this starting away still matters because we still need to find the first row that the Atlanta Hawks start on, right? Which is right there. So it's row two makes sense. Now for the away count, right? This is counting how many of those exist. So what we can do actually is change this formula out or get rid of it entirely. So I'm just gonna hide this one for now. Pretend that we deleted it. Um, so here, right, the away end, because what we were doing was the away start plus that count minus one equals the end. So what we can do here is rather than saying, let's look at the last record that exists, just point to the history game count. So we will say instead B4 plus B1. Now here you're going to want to put the dollar signs to lock that so that when you move this formula around, it doesn't break. And then you're going to say minus one. Now we're going to take this and copy and paste it all the way down. And let's just make sure that this is all referencing the correct info. So the away end, great. So we've gone ahead and updated our formula all the way down. And as you can see, these points four have changed. 
and the points against. So as you can see, this is 120.6 between uh, the first and the 15th game. So we can do that. Then we can do this as well over here. We're gonna say um, blended home points. So blended. So here we're gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna say equals starting home plus this value, right? Which is again, the 15 game count that we want. I'm gonna lock that in and then say minus one and take it on down. And now these numbers have once again changed. So now that we have the score set, we need to actually adjust for this over here. The league average information is still wrong. And the reason that it's wrong is, is that it's pulling in all of the season's information. So even though we're gonna try and predict a game that happens on January 30th, right? It's still pulling in every single score, including the January 30th. So that is wrong and we don't want to do that. So at the bottom of the screen, you're gonna click the new sheet icon and you can just call this league, which I have now. And what we're gonna to wanna to do is come into away. We'll copy all this info. We're gonna paste it on in here. And now rather than sorting by team, we wanna sort by the actual date instead and just the date, oldest to newest, right? Which is gonna get us all of the game information. So then what we can do is we're gonna come in here and we're gonna come down to the 15th game, which was on December 14th. So we're gonna make December 14th our marker. So I'm gonna come out here and I'm just gonna put game marker. Now that that is in, we're gonna use this to try and find the location of the row. And then we're gonna blend it with a count if to find out how many games happen then and then we're gonna go ahead and subtract the one. So what we do is say equals count if, and now we need to do the range. So rather than typing it, you can click the tab and click in, okay? And I'm just gonna put a one just so it bounces me back to the sheet quickly and update it to say M1. So we're gonna say count if, okay? Now we're gonna take this info plus match, and we're gonna say M1 from league A to A, zero, and then we're gonna subtract one. And the reason that this is breaking is because I accidentally typed 2023, we want 2022, which then gives us this, 424. So then what you need to do is you need to update this. So I'm gonna lock this in with the dollar sign and put two, and then come over here, lock this in, put the dollar sign, and then put in the number that is found in N1. Now you can use more of a complex formula to go ahead and use this as a variable within your formula, which will allow it to automatically update. So you can go ahead and do that uh, however you'd like. So we have this, right? So now we have this sorted again. So we're gonna go ahead and finish locking this one in. F and this is two and this is F and this is 424. Now again, since we said they're kind of inverse, you can say the home is gonna be the points allowed and equal. This is gonna be the points for, is the points against. So now that we've resolved the average info, let's go ahead and look at these formulas because these are probably off since we've gone ahead and changed things over here. So we have points for is no longer in column F, it's actually in column E. So points away, column E. And we'll make this here. So points for, um, for home, Okay, and then the points against, all right, so away points against is going to be in column F now, not G, so we'll get that. And we'll just double check this one. So points against is not in column K, it is now in column J. So we wanna clean this up. And again, these are just changing because we've modified our values over here and updated things. Um, so here we're gonna take a look and make sure that these are still all referencing everything correctly. Most of these metric ones should be because they weren't having things in quotes. So when you use indirect, when you put it in a quote, it doesn't automatically update. Whereas here, when we inserted rows, these letters and numbers automatically update when we insert columns and rows. So that's why some of this stuff's changing. All right, so then the game that we said we were going to do was 28, row 28. All right, so we're going Atlanta Hawks versus the Minnesota Timberwolves who are home. So we're gonna say the away team, 
and come back in here. So it was 124 to 125. And we'll put that here. All right, so this is what the prediction tool is saying right now based on the initial 15 games averages. This is what we're seeing. So now if we wanted to update this, right? So let's see here, we went to 130 and we only use say the first 15 games. So if we were to change this, um, let's go ahead and do that and we'll say the first 25 games. So we said the first 25 games, let's go ahead and see how that changes things. So we're gonna change this to 25. We see our numbers jump around. So I'm gonna say my first 25 games, right? So over here, we are not gonna be using 114 anymore. So first 25 is gonna land us on 123 of 2023. So we need to update this, 123 of 2023. As you'll notice, this number now has jumped up. All right, which means that now all these numbers are gonna be getting modified. So I need to change this one here to 713. And again, this is where using a variable is useful here rather than hard coding this. And these are updated, great. So now this one is saying that I think it's actually only gonna be 114 to 118. Um, and as you can see, the numbers have kind of moved around a little bit here. So as you can see, if we roll back the numbers, it might have been a little bit more predictive to only use the first 15. Now, one of the things though that I have to really hammer home is that doing it this way does not have enough insight. Now this is a useful model to get within a range, right? You can get in a, a general consensus and range of how the team's performing, right? This is more of just a guiding principle. Do not use this model exactly as is to try and do predictions because the problem is you don't know who played in all of these games. Maybe an all-star was out. Maybe an all-star was planned to be out for the game you're trying to predict. Maybe, uh, you know, a, the team was sick. Maybe they had insane travel and got delayed so then they didn't get much rest and they had to play on no sleep, right? So don't use this kind of a tool to automatically assume you've got the results. So that is it for today's video. As you can see, it is useful to try and use reduced amounts of stats as far as what your data set's going to be. You don't wanna include anything uh, that has already occurred that you're accounting for. So if I'm looking at game 10 of last season, I don't wanna include game 10 stats within my model. It doesn't work well. It's predicting something that has already happened using that information. So it's already baked into the result. What you want to use is predecessor data, but you don't want to go too far back because again, the first three games of an NBA season play completely different than two months later and completely different from another two months later. If you like this content and would like to share it with anybody, please give this video a thumbs up. That way it pushes it to the top of the YouTube algorithm and other people can find it. If you do find this useful as well, feel free to subscribe. Uh, if you hit the notification icon, that way you will be alerted as soon as the next video is up for this series or any of the other videos that I'm doing around sports betting. Now, if you do have some questions, comments, or concerns about this, feel free to drop a comment. Uh, you can also reach me on Twitter or X at wagered on tilt, and you can reach me in the unabated discord as the T. So I hope this was helpful and useful for you to kind of start thinking through what kind of data sets you want to use, how much information should you put into your model and things like that. So until next time, happy wagering.